Hello again, this is Ben from Flexim, and this is part two of my on my how-to series on importing from Excel and auto-building your model from Excel. And in particular, we're focusing on conveyors. Again, this is part two, so if you haven't watched part one yet, why don't you go back and watch part one. So we're about to programmatically create conveyors based on what we import from Excel. So what I'll do is go to Tools and User Commands and create my own user command that will do the, everything I need it to do. So I've already built it, and I'll walk you through what I've done. I've called mine Auto Build Conveyors from Excel, just so that I always know what it does. So let's go ahead and look at the code that I created. So the very first thing that I do is I call Excel Multiple Table Import. What this does is it, is it executes the Multiple Table Import. It's exactly the same thing that happens when I press this button. Keep in mind I've already created the Multiple Table Import parameters that I want to use to import my Excel data. So part of my user command, what it will do is go ahead and import that data. The next thing that I need to do is declare some variables. Rather than trying to remember what all the different columns are in my table, I defined these integers so that I can just use the column names later on. I, in addition, I get a reference to our conveyor info table, and I declare some empty pointers to the conveyor, to the conveyor's sections node, and then a pointer just to a section and then I set a I declare a new flag called new conveyor you'll see how that will be used in a moment alright so keep in mind I've, I've already imported from Excel declared a bunch of variables now we get to the meat of the code so the first thing I do is I get the number of rows that are in that table and then I want to loop through and execute the following code for every row of the table the first thing I do is I reset the new conveyor flag. I just say it's not a new conveyor, set it to zero. That's resetting it right at the beginning. Now what I need to do is check to see if the conveyor name column in the table contains string data. Let me go ahead and import from Excel right now so that you can see why this will be important. So I've just imported into my conveyor info table and this is what it looks like after I import from Excel. Now you can see all of this data is numeric except for those conveyor names. Because I started those names with the letter A, then Flexim says, oh, this is character data string. And so it's not numeric, it's a string. So the, what I need to do is as I'm cruising through each row, I check to see if this column has letter values, string data, rather than numeric data. And that tells me, hey, I've just run into a new conveyor, quit adding sections to an a conveyor that was already created and create a brand new conveyor. So that's what I do here. I say, hey, if the data type in that cell of the table is a string, then I need to create a new conveyor. And you do that using this command here, create instance. That's the one we're really concerned with right now. I'm creating a new instance of this node right here. This references, this node command is referencing the conveyor in FlexSim's object library. So I say create a new instance of the conveyor and put it into the model. And I also get a reference of it called conv, short for conveyor. Next thing, I need to set the location and the rotation of that conveyor. And again, I, I'm only concerning myself with the x and y position and I assume a z position. And I assume zeros for the x and y rotation and just allow the user to set a z rotation. Since this is a brand new conveyor, I go ahead and I set the new conveyor flag, and then I want to get a reference to this conveyor's sections node. So keep in mind, let me jump back to the tree. I've got it open here somewhere. Well, I don't know where. We'll just open a new one. So the sections node is this one right here, and it has a list of all of the sections that are involved in that conveyor. So I just get a reference to that sections node and I save it for later. So I just walked you through creating a brand new conveyor and now in the next video we'll go over how to set up the sections. So please join me for part three of this video series. Thank you very much.